وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى in, today we're, in today's uh, tafsir session we're going to take the ayat in surah uh, al-Ma'ida where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ بِنَّيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ إِذْ قَرَّبَ قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ قَالَ لَأَقْتُلَنَّكَ قَالَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ لَإِنْ بَسَطْتَ إِلَيَّ يَدَكَ لِتَقْتُلَنِي مَا أَنَا بِبَاسِطِ يَدِيَ إِلَيْكَ لِأَقْتُلَكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ إِنِّي أُرِيدُ أَنْ تَبُوءَ بِإِثْمِي وَإِثْمِكَ فَتَكُونَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ فَقَتَلَهُ فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يَبْحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي سَوْءَةَ أَخِيهِ قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتَا أَعْجَزْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ فَأُوَارِيَ سَوْءَةَ أَخِيهِ فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا ولقد جاءتهم رسلنا بالبينات ثم إن كثيرا منهم بعد ذلك في الأرض لمسرفون الله تبارك وتعالى He starts by saying وَتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ The meaning of وَتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ is Read on them Muhammad أُقْصُصْ يَا Muhammad The word أُتْلُ means read on them Recite on them what? Khabar ibn Adam. The word Naba it means khabar, the story, the news of the children of Adam. Now, Ibn Adam is the two sons of Adam. Ibn Jarir al Tabari and Ibn Kathir rahimahumullah, both of them they transmitted an ijma', a consensus that these are two of the sons of. Adam alayhi salam because sometimes the word Ibn can be used for your grandson okay or you can refer to as your own father or you can that you can say uh, my father and refer to as your granddad the Arabs do that but here by unanimous agreement that Ibn Jalil al-Tabari transmitted when he said ijma'u ahli al-akhbar wasir wal-ilmi بالتأويل على أنهما كانا ابني آدم لصلبه وفي عهد آدم وزمانه. so he transmits إجماع from who أهل الأخبار أهل السير the scholars of the سيرة the scholars of knowledge the scholars of تفسير that these are two sons of آدم عليه السلام and they are directly from آدم <coughs> they're his two sons. وَفِي أَحْدِ آدَمَ وَزَمَانِهِ And they were also, also at the time of Adam alayhi salam. This all happened at the time of Adam alayhi salam. It wasn't after he passed away and died. Ibn Kathir on the other hand, he said, فَهَذِي أَقْوَالُ الْمُفَسِّرِينَ فِي هَذِي الْقِصَّةِ وَكُلُّهُمْ مُتَّفِقُونَ That all of them are in agreement على أن هذين ابن آدم That these two are أن هذين That these two that the ayah is talking about are what Ibn Adam, the, the two sons of Adam, لصلبه, كما هو ظاهر القرآن, as the ظاهر of the Quran shows. وكما نطق به الحديث, and also as the hadith stated, which hadith is he referring to? He mentions it. في قوله, il, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, إلا كان على ابن آدم الأول that uh, what is upon the son of Adam, the first one, Kiflum min demiha. Anyone who murders today 
or any time in Islamic history, or even before Islamic history, or even after that, from the day that one of the children of Adam committed this crime and started it off, that day onwards, he is going to receive a sin for it. Every time somebody commits it, he's going to receive a sin for it. Why? Because he's the first one who paved the path for murdering and killing. Then Ibn Kathir finishes, on, finishes off by saying, وَهَذَا ظَاهِرٌ جَلِيٌّ So this is clear that the ayat that we're going to be, inshallah ta'ala, commenting on is referring to the two sons of Adam alayhi salam. Okay, brothers and sisters. Who is it that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala told our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to read these verses on and to tell them the story of these verses? It was the Jews. Allah told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to go and what? Read these verses on the Jew. And there's a reason why this is the case. The reason is because as we're going to see, or if you look at the ayat before that, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala mentions that the Jews refused to go into Bayt al-Maqdis when they were commanded to go into it. They refused to follow Allah's command subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah told them to go in and they refused to go into it. Now that they refused to go into it and they didn't adhere to the statement of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, Allah is trying to tell them a story of someone they resemble in this issue who committed that same crime, who did a crime as well, disobeyed Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, didn't give any weight to the statement of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, didn't, yani, also, this quality of hasid, having hasid for someone, is a trait known by the Jews. If you look at the Quran, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he mentions that the Jews, they don't want the Muslims to remain as a Muslims and be upon their religion, the reason why? Hasadan min indi anfusihim. Because of jealousy in their hearts towards the Muslims. They see the way the Muslims are and the lifestyle that they have and the happiness Allah has given them and that Nabi Muhammad is a prophet from them. Yani, uh, came from the Arabs and all of that. They had hasad in their hearts towards him. And the reason why one of the children of Adam chose to kill his brother, as we're going to see, is because of hasad. It's because of what? It's because of hasad. That which is famous is famous is that the name of one of them is Habil and the other one is Qabil. This is common and it's famous, these names. If you look at Tafsir al Kathir, it's stated in there and Adwa al Bayan al Shankiti mentions it, Rahimahullah. But there's no evidences from the ahadith of the Prophet where it states Qabil and Habil. Okay, it's taken from the qisas and the stories of Banu Israel. So the Prophet Sallallahu was instructed by Allah wa Ta'ala to read the story on the Jews and other than them. That this story is true and it happened. لا لبس فيه ولا كذب. There's no lie about it. This is the truth. It happened. It took place. And the story is mentioned without any additional information that didn't exist. It's exactly how it happened and how it took place. So what is the story? إِذْ قَرَّبَ قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ the story is that one of them, or both of them, they put forward a qurban. They both put forward something in which they were trying to get closer to Allah by it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah accepted it from one of them, and he didn't accept it from the other one. They both came out, two brothers. They put something forward to Allah, wa ta'ala, trying to get closer to him by it. It was accepted from one, and it wasn't accepted from the other. Now, the one that he got accepted from, He's happy that Allah accepted it from him. But the other one, who he never got accepted from, he got angry. Something entered his heart. Hasad entered his heart. So he came to his brother and he said to him, I'm going to kill you. I will kill you. After he saw that his brother's one got accepted, this is what he said to him. He said to him, I'm going to kill you. And the reason why he said that was, Hasad akha. He had hasad towards his brother. And the thing that he promised his brother was what? فَتَوَعَدَهُ بِالْقَتْلِ He promised him and he said, I'm going to kill you. The brother responded. He didn't say, I'm going to kill you. If you kill me, I'm going to do this to you. He didn't say that. He said, إِقَالَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ He said, Allah, he accepts 
from the one who is pious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes from an action that a person does, Allah accepts it from the one who is pious. Two people do an action, one it will be accepted from him, another one it will not be accepted from him. Why? Because this one came with sincerity. He did it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. He did it in accordance to the command that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gave. Allah will accept it from him. This is also a refutation on the khawarij and the murji'a, two deviated groups. Two deviated groups. Okay? Which is what? The khawarij, the way it's a refutation on them is as you know, brothers and sisters, the khawarij believe anyone who does a major sin is a disbeliever. And the action of that person is Yani, whatever good they do, it will never be accepted from them. Because they're a disbeliever. If you disobey Allah wa ta'ala in anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never accept it from you because you're a disbeliever. But this shows that if a person does an action, even if he's a sinner in other things, but if he does an action with what? With taqwa. He does that, that particular action. He does it with sincerity. He does it in the way that Allah sanctioned and commanded it. That particular action that Allah will accept it from him. That's what the ayah shows. That Allah accepts it from a person who does what he does in a uh, pious way. And that's the way that the story goes. Because remember, he's basing it on that particular action that he did. He said, I did this action with sincerity, of course. And I did it in accordance to how Allah sanctioned it. And on the, you, on the other hand, didn't. Okay? So, that's what he said. Then he went on to say to him, La in basatta. What does it mean, La in basatta? It means if you open, yani medetta, you open your palm towards me. Ilayya to me, yadaka, your hand, you open your, heart, your palm to what? Litaqa to kill me. Litaqa to that lamb in Islam, a ta'aleel, li ajli and taqtulani. You're doing it just to kill me. ما أنا بباسط I am not one that's going to open his palm يدي لأقتلك يدي إليك لأقتلك I am not going to open my palm and I am not going to intend to kill you I am not going to do this صنيعك الفاسد your corrupt action your evil intent I am not going to do something like that which is an important point that we learn from it, brothers and sisters. That evil people are not our teachers. People who are bad, they don't teach us how we should carry ourselves and the way that we should be. In Islam, we don't learn from our enemies. Our enemies learn from us. And here, this is what he was teaching him. He's got a moral standard. He's, this is who he is. This is how great and noble this individual is. This other person can say what they want, act in whatever way they want. Your morality, your, your nobility, your righteousness is consistent. That's why he said to him what he said to him. If you open your palm, your hand to kill me, I'm not going to open my palm to kill you. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not going to respond to your evil with another evil. No, I'm not going to do that. Why? There's a reason why I'm not going to be able to do that. Because I have something you don't have. That's basically what he's saying. You, I have something that you don't have here, which is inni akhafullah rabbal alameen. I am scared of Allah. I don't want to go to Allah yawm al qiyamah and I'm someone who killed you. No, I'm not going to do that. I am scared of... غضب الله Allah's anger وعقاب الله and Allah's punishment and that's what I'm scared of I can't do that to him subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is the king of all kings Allah is the creator of everything Allah is the one who bore, bore us in this, into this world so he's the one who sanctioned for us not to do such a thing I'm going to follow him subhanahu wa ta'ala I fear him if I go against him I'm scared what he might do to me the other one didn't have that even after that, he even after he heard this, it didn't move him. And then he said, "Inni uridu an tabu abithmi." Also, there's something else I want, which is "Inni uridu," which is also a refutation on who. It's also a refutation 
on the people who go against Ahlul Sunnah in the matter of Qadr. Ahlul Sunnah believe that the person has an irada. Inni uridu, uridu, irada. Humans have a choice. Humans have a what? They have an irada. So he's saying to him, Inni uridu, I want. What is it that I want? And tabu'a bi ithmi wa ithmika. I want you to carry the burden of your sin and I want you to also carry the burden of my sin and that you meet Allah wa ta'ala with both of those sins. I want you to return back to Allah wa ta'ala carrying mutahammilan ithma qatli you take the burden of, of this sin of mine of my, you, the sin of killing me and the sins that you've also committed in the past, the things that you did before, I want those two to all collect it to you and be placed on you. That's what I want. And guess what? فَتَكُونَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ And that you, you become from what? You become from the Sukan al-Jahim, the, the residents of the hellfire, who stay in the hellfire. I want you to be from those people. Because that is the punishment of every transgressor and every criminal Anyone who transgresses, that's the hukubah for them. That's the punishment for them. That's what I want you to be. After hearing all of that, his heart didn't move. And some people are like that. The reminder doesn't benefit them. You can talk to them. You can advise them. It doesn't benefit to them. If Allah wanted, if Allah saw good in some people, he would have made them hear the message. And it would have penetrated through. And it would have touched their hearts. And they would have وَلَوْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ خَيْرًا لَأَسْمَعُهُمْ If Allah wanted some people, they're out, out, out there, they remind, it doesn't benefit them. All day you can talk. وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّا There's a seal on their hearts. They can't hear the truth when it comes. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He told us that فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ فَقَتَلَهُ فَطَوَّعَتْ نَفْسُهُ means his nafs beautified for him. فَسَوَّلَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ his nafs beautified it for him وسهلت عليه and it made it easy for him once it beautified it to him it said really that's just mine I just kidding no problem it's easy just do this and that's what shaitan does with life brothers it beautifies something to you and makes it seem very easy and then later you realize what you just did was something very serious that's what happened to him it got beautified for him it made it seem easy to him and then he killed his brother Okay, he killed his brother and then, then he started to regret what he did. He obeyed this nafs that's within us that calls us to evil. There's that evil nafs that's in a lot of us that calls us to the evil. He chose to obey it. And straight away, look what happened. Straight away he became from those khabu wa khasiru. They found that any destruction was for him. He, st he was now in a state of loss. In this world, that's what's happened to him. And that's how he's going to be remembered. And also in the hereafter. وَلِذَلِكَ عَبْدِ ibn Mas'udin رضي الله تعالى عنه He mentioned that the Prophet وسلم, he said لا تقتل نفس ظلما There's no individual who's killed Unjustly, there is not a person who murders a person إلا كان على ابن آدم الأول كفل من دمها Except this one, this evil one that killed his brother here He is going to take a burden of it يوم القيامة Why? لأنه أول من سن القتل Because he was the first person who what? Who sanctioned, he's the first person who paved this path of killing And brothers and sisters, the benefit that we take from here which is if you start off a sin, remember this, you're going to take not only the sin of you doing this crime, but every single person who comes after you, who followed you on this path, will take your sin. That's what Allah said in the ayah. يَحْمِلُونَ أَوْزَارَهُمْ كَامِلَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَمِنْ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ يُضِلُّونَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ أَلَا سَعَبَ يَنْزِرُونَ You're going to take your sin, and you're going to take the sin of every single person you've misguided with you. The word kiflun min damiha, it means ضعفا, ضعف min ithmiha, juz, juzun, nasib. 
عزيز منشن لكتاب مشارق الانوار باي قاضي عياض نووي منشن ان هيز شرح صحيح مسلم. When he killed his brother, they said that he carried his brother on his shoulder. Because remember, he's the first one who's done this before. He doesn't know what's happened now. He just knows, he just knows that his brother is no longer alive, but he doesn't know what to do after this. There's no يعني, knowledge that, or someone who he takes from. So he, they said he carried his brother on his shoulder. And then Allah wa Ta'ala, he doesn't know what to do his brother. So Allah wa Ta'ala sent to him, فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يعني فبعث هي means أي فأرسل الله تعالى الله sent to him specifically was specifically sent for him غرابا a crow right يبحث في الأرض the word يبحث it means that it was يعني digging into the earth okay ليريه the reason why this crow was doing that was to show him كيف يواري سوء أخي so we can teach him how to bury his brother. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he sent his ghurab, yahfiru fil ard. Yabhathu fil ard means yahfiru fil ard. It was digging, digging the earth. And uh, the reason why this crow was doing it was because the crow itself was burying another crow that died. So he saw it, he looked. Um, then it came to him. Oh, why don't I do exactly what that crow is doing? Okay? And that's another thing where, where humans, we learn from one another. We copy one another. It affects the surroundings and the environment and the places we're in, brothers and sisters. Don't you ever think to yourself, it doesn't have an effect on you. Of course it does have an effect on you. Just by looking at someone and the way they do things, we take it down and we start doing that. Sometimes we do it even without intentionally doing it. So that's what happened. He saw it and he did that. He saw he, the crow doing it and he said, oh, wow. And why don't I do it? This is the response he gave. He said, قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتَا أَعَجَزْتُ أَنْ أَقُولَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ فَأُوَارِ يَسَوْ أَتَخِي He said, يَا وَيْلَتَا did my destruction. أَعَجَزْتُ Am I unable? Am I so weak that I can't even become like the crow? Okay. And أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ For me to be like this crow. فَأُوَارِيَ سَوْ أَتَقِي And I bury my brother. Can I not have done that? Can I not just follow him? Why should I, why should I not? And what's stopping me from doing it? And Imam al-Shawkaniyu, he mentions, رَحِمَهُ الله, in his Fathul Qadir, he says, قِيلَ It was said, إِنَّهُ لَمَّا قَتَلَ أَخَاهُ When he killed his brother, لَمْ يَدْرِ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي He didn't know how to bury him. لِكَوْنِ أَوَّلَ مَيِّتٍ مَاتَ مِن بَنِي آدم because he was, his brother was the first human being to ever die, to be ever killed. Actually, they say he was the first human to actually even die. There wasn't just the first one to be killed. The first to be killed, well, he was, no doubt. But he was also the first human to die. So he didn't know what to do with him. Okay? So that's why he was sent this crow to show him the way to do things. Um, and sometimes some people might not know, but... It comes under full, uh, pondering and contemplating over the creation of Allah sometimes. SubhanAllah, these haywanat, the things that they do, and the way that see some of these animals are. SubhanAllah, if you just look at it and you think and you ponder over it, shocking and amazement. Do you guys know, brothers and sisters, when you look at the animal kingdom, such as, for example, insects, don't even go too far. There are insects we're talking about here. How smart and clever they are. How do they do things? The way that they handle things. There's, there's, there's a bird, it's called the eagle, that eats monkeys. It's an eagle, it's actually an eagle. It eats monkey. And it eats, subhanAllah, rams and goats and sheep and cows even, subhanAllah. Even human beings, if you can take it, it'll take it. But subhanAllah, the thing that shocked me the most about it is that it will sometimes take a goat. The eagle is not strong enough to carry the goat for so long. So what does it do? It lifts the goat from a place. When it takes it into the sky, it drops it. Of course, the goat's not going to be able to, it'll die as soon as it hits the ground. And that's how it goes and it eats it. I and mean, the way to deal with things, you don't, you don't have the ability to carry it and run it. You're not strong as like a lion. I and mean, the instincts of prey and, and being the predator and 
here being the prey and the way the animals know how to function in the kingdom. If you look at the ants and the way they take يعني, awamir from one another and they work together, just literally sit down and just watch it. If you can't, go and watch the wildlife animals when they're spoken about. You'll be shocked how the ants are. Very shocked the way they work together, the way they do a single line and they do things together. It's shocking. So it comes under the verse of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala where Allah mentions the believers الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والارض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. They look at the the uh, the signs that Allah, the things Allah created around them, the stars, the sun, the moons, animals, and they ponder over it and they take lessons from it. So this is what happened in this situation. He looked at the crow and saw what the crow is doing. And then he said to him, قال يا ويلة عجزت أن أكون مثل هذا الغراب فأواني سوء 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 أتاخي. Like am I unable to follow this crow and do exactly as this crow does? Am I that? And is that is that how weak I am? فأصبح من النادمين and he became from those who regretted. What is it that he regretted? He regretted uh, in killing his brother. He regretted it. Now no longer is his brother around. ولذلك الشيخ من عثيمين رحمه الله he says وهذا القاتل أصبح من النادمين على قتل أخيه وعلى عجزه عن مواراة سوءة أخيه فجمع الندم لأمرين جميعا. He regretted both. He regretted the fact that he was unable to bury his brother and didn't know how to deal with that. Okay, after he killed him. And the second thing that he also regretted was killing his brother. Then Allah تبارك وتعالى he says من أجل ذلك كتبنا من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل. Because of that, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ يعني حكمنا على بني إسرائيلَ We judged over بني إسرائيلَ Legislated over بني إسرائيلَ أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا Whoever from amongst them kills a soul بغير نفس Without a نفس أو فساد في الأرض or they do it out of corruption on this earth. It's like they killed all mankind. Because of this story that we just heard right now, Allah is saying, because of what happened between the children of Adam, okay, uh, one brother killing his other brother, and he did it oppressively and unjust, and he did it in a zulm and an unjust manner. Allah says, "Hakamna ala bani Israel." We prescribed, we ordained upon bani Israel that whoever from amongst them tajarra minhum faqatla nafsan wahida bighayri sababin, he goes and he kills a person with no reason, no justified reason, min qisasin, because there's there are reasons which are allowed. For example, capital punishments. Okay, he kills manslaughter. He goes and commits, and he killing people. He will be killed for it. Okay, oh, fasadin fil ardi, oh, he's causing corruption on this earth. If someone kills another person, he should be killed for it. Qisasan. And also, if he brings mischief on this earth, like for example, highway robbery, wa ikhafat al sabil, yani, yani, ka kat al tariq, wa ikhafat al sabil, he brings, he's terrorizing the people, he's causing mischief on the earth. He's killing many people. He should be killed for it as well. وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا And any individual. ما معنى وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا هي It means مَنْ حَرَّمَ قَتْلَ مَنْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Anyone who prohibits killing innocent people stands against that. Says, I'm not going to tolerate anyone killing an innocent person. And also doesn't go forward in doing so. And he doesn't ever go forward in doing such an evil act. That person, it's like he's given life to the whole entire human race. It's like he's given it to it. Then Allah Taala He says, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُولُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Allah says, it has come. Our with our messengers have come with clear-cut evidences. الْبَرَاهِينَ الظَّاهِرَةِ وَالْدَلَائِلِ الْوَاضِحَةِ Our prophets, our messengers, they came with clear-cut proofs. To Badu Israel and also after them and before them. All the prophets they came with what? Al Barahil al Zahira, clear proofs. With Dalail al Wadha, Hujaj they came with. In which, Alati la yabqa ma'a hujjatu li ahadi. No proof can somebody try to bring after that. 
ثم إن كثيرا منهم بعد ذلك في الأرض لم يصرفون. After all of the prophets what they came with, the hujaj they came with, البينات القاطعة للحجة, all of that which the prophets and the messengers came. With that being said, there are those who are what? عاملون في الأرض بالمعاصي, acting upon this on this earth since. In opposition to guidance, following their desires, doing maha haram, there are still people like that who do not want to follow what Allah sanctions, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's always going to be the case. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdi, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayh. Ramadan with AMAU. Make this the best Ramadan you've ever had by joining our exclusive online community with regular private classes, digital resources, weekly accountability sessions and daily Qur'an gatherings. This is one opportunity you definitely do not want to miss. So sign up now at amau.org forward slash Ramadan and we look forward to welcoming you on the other side.